Welcome to another episode of Vader Down. Today, we are meeting with the Chief Human Resource Officer at One Oncology, Janice Baker. So Janice and I actually met a few years ago at a holiday party uh, for our, a master swim team. So her husband swims masters, uh, I, I swim masters. We were at the party, uh, started talking to each other, um, started talking about what I do professionally, what she does professionally. And she actually brought forth uh, an opportunity at her current employer at the time, which was Sheridan, um, and said, hey, Deidre, I actually think you might be interested in this opportunity. Here it is. Um, at that point in time, I was working at DaVita and uh, was interested in exploring other opportunities. So applied, interviewed, and was actually um, given the position. And that is when I transferred over to Sheridan. And um, Janice and I had the pleasure of working together um, for several years, her in the HR capacity and myself on the operations side. Um, and so I'm very thankful for kind of the that night when fate aligned and I met Janice and um, helped introduce that opportunity to me um, at Sheridan, which really helped um, my career growth um, over the years. So excited for you all to meet Janice today and hear her story. So Janice, welcome. How are you doing? I'm doing great, Deidre. And you know, it was uh, it was kind of a fateful night, I think. And it was um, it was great to have you join, you know, the Sheridan team as well. You just fit in right away and, and you know, kind of took your career off from there. So it was a great hire for us and, and you know, it helped you on the career side as well. So I think it was a win-win for everybody. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, it was a great experience and enjoyed getting to know you. So um, why don't you start today by letting the viewers get to know you um, and give us an overview of your career and uh, your climb to your current position. Sure, absolutely. I actually, you know, started my career as an agency recruiter. Um, I was doing recruiting for a number of different organizations and then decided that I really liked the connecting of people to jobs, but not quite so much the sales side and being on commission, quite frankly. Um, so I transitioned my career into being more of a corporate recruiter at a bank and um, did that for a period of time. And then we had new leadership come in who said, hey, we want you all to be generalists rather than specialists. So I got to learn a little bit more of all aspects of HR when I moved into that role. And after a few years, I was promoted to a manager where I helped us start up and grow um, a particular office in the Dallas market and um, then had the opportunity to kind of switch sides of HR and go and be a learning and development manager uh, for the same organization, which was kind of a, a twist I never had really expected, but it actually perfectly got me ready for what was my next role, which um, we had an opportunity to do international assignments at the bank that I was working at. And the perfect job popped up where I had the chance to move to London and live a couple of years and manage two global training programs. I spent a couple of years there, then came back to the United States where I went back to the HR side of, of the world as an HR director. But unfortunately, it was right as the banking crisis happened in 2007, 2008. So I realized it was probably time to, to change industries after 10 plus years in banking and um, took a couple of lateral moves where I was in manufacturing and then medical device and then ultimately in healthcare. Um, which is Sheridan where we met. And over time, I grew into a um, vice president of human resources and then a senior vice president of human resources, taking on you know, additional responsibilities as I went. And then just recently um, got the opportunity to be the chief human resources officer at One Oncology. And I jumped at the chance and, and have been loving it ever since. So. That's just a little bit of my career path. I think each job kind of prepared me for the next one without sometimes even realizing it. Um, but, you know, 
career that's spanned about 20 years now. Great. So looking back on that, Janice, was there a certain position or um, time in your career where someone really kind of gave you a chance or an opportunity where maybe you didn't quite have, um, you know, a lot of experience for that kind of next step, um, but they uh, gave you a chance anyways? And if so, can you tell us a little bit about that experience? Sure. I think the first one was when I first became a manager, you know, as, as any of us who first start managing people, we've never done it before. So somebody has to take a risk on you for the first time when you're going to lead a team. Um, but I would say that really the next role was the one that pivotal in my career and where it was probably the bit, one of the bigger stretches for me where I had been managing a team of HR professionals um, I was wanting to come back to San Diego and I told my boss, I said, hey, when there's a job that opens up back in San Diego, call me. She called me a couple of, of months later and says, I've got a job for you. It's going to be, it's leading our learning and development team. And I said, wait a minute, <laughs> I've never led a learning and development team. Why would I be good for this job? And she said, you know, really what we need is a good leader. Um, we had somebody in here that understood the, the job, but wasn't a great leader. You can learn the, the job. Um, we just need somebody in that can help lead the team. And she really took a chance on me and, and I kind of took a leap of faith as well. And, you know, it, like I said earlier, it just kind of aligned so many other things in my career later and just made me, you know, learn and grow and develop more as an HR professional. So that was probably the biggest one. Um, I would say the next one was really my, my most recent job. I had never been a chief human resources officer, although I'd led, you know, pretty much all aspects of HR. I wasn't the person that was you know, in charge of the entire department. So this new role at One Oncology was, was a little bit of a leap of faith as well for the organization to bring in somebody that had not had that top job before and something that sometimes is, sometimes is un, hard to get really. Um, most people want somebody that's had that experience if they're coming from, you know, another organization, they're usually looking for somebody with that experience. So even later in my career, that's happened. So early on and later on, but um, ultimately it's worked out. Is there any advice you can give from uh, taking that leap of faith that, that you've learned personally through these different journeys that you just ex explained that, um, you know, sharing with viewers that might be going through something similar that you could share to help them maybe make that decision on uh, making that jump? Yeah, you know, I think particularly as women, um, you know, research has shown that most women will not apply for a job unless they think that they have 90 to 100 percent of the qualifications, whereas men often will apply for a job when they only have 60 percent of the qualifications. So what I would say is whether you think you're qualified or not, go for it. You'll learn along the way. And, you know, if you're the right fit for the right for the job, then ultimately, you know, you'll make it work and you'll figure it out as you go. We don't all have the answers um, and you just got to trust and listen to people and, and pay attention and just keep learning and you'll be doing, you'll do just fine. So I would say just take the risk. So let's shift and talk about women in the workplace a little bit. So Janice, have you witnessed um, what I'll call kind of the good old boy network? And that's really just, you know, men helping men in the workplace. Um, and if so, uh, what's your perspective on, on this? I think it's usually less formal than um, what you maybe see with women. Um, but I also see, you know, one of a couple of things. One is that, you know, I think we're all victims of people hire people that are like them. So men will often hire men, women often hire women or have some sort of similarity with the person. So I think because we have so many men in leadership roles, inevitably you're likely to get more men promoted by those men. Um, but also I see it in a lot of 
even more subtle ways is there's times when I've been to a business meeting or a conference and the men go out for a drink and granted I'm HR so not everybody wants to invite <laughs> HR out for drinks <laughs> um, but often it feels sometimes like they don't want to invite the woman out for drinks and it's really, um, I think, one of those things that men need to lean in and pay attention to, because it really does give the, the men that they're inviting a leg up, because you're inevitably going to talk business, you're inevitably going to build a relationship that you wouldn't have built otherwise. Um, and I think it puts women at a real disadvantage when that happens. But I see that a lot in those more subtle ways. Mm -hmm. Completely agree in the subtle ways I've encountered the same. And so um, I feel like I've encountered less on the woman side of it. So really women empowering other women, women, women help bringing up other women. Um, what's your experience been with um, women and other women in the workplace? Yeah, I agree with you. I think that women, um, you know, should be women's champions because if they're not doing it, who is? Um, and so you do see things like women's infinity groups and things like that that are there to really try to help women grow and develop their career, you know, look for advice and, you know, just really learn from each other. But I've also seen where they have not been exclusive um, and not invited men in. So even these women's infinity groups, in my experience, have often invited men to participate and be a part of that. Um, and so I do think that women tend to be more inclusive. I don't know if that's just, you know, inherent nature of women, or if it's because we, you know, are so used to men being, you know, in the business place that we feel like that we're going to miss out if we don't invite them or miss a different perspective um, than we would have if we hadn't invited them in. So I do think that women tend to be a little bit more inclusive, but also certainly are there to, to help other women. If you could change one thing about women in the business setting today, what would it be and why? I think that in those circumstances where women don't help women. Um, you see that as well occasionally. I think that there's sometimes women feel that there's only room for one of them at the top and that it's either her or me and therefore um, I'm going to make sure it's me and not and not her. And that's really, really unfortunate um, because there's room for all of us. There's room for all of us at the top and we really need to make sure that we're supporting women um, and, and helping them get to the same place that you are. It shouldn't be seen as threatening. Um, it should be seen as, as further support system for you. Yeah, absolutely. I um, completely agree. I've seen it in the workplace and I see it even in like a workout setting, right? There'll be yeah. older women that don't welcome me, welcome me in because, you know, I'm the younger woman in the workout, you know, arena. And it should always be in my perspective, how can we, um, help empower each other, bring each other up. And that's really what, what Vader Down is based on. So um, yeah. now, now as we move back to talking about your journey and your career, what do you wish you knew back when you started your career that you know now? I think really that you don't have to know all of the answers, um, that most people don't know all of the answers. Um, and if you do, then you probably don't have all the answers if you think you have them all. <laughs> so, um, so I think that if, if I had known that when I was younger, I probably would have had a little bit more confidence when um, pursuing that next role or taking that next level or, or pushing myself to the next level is, you know, I, I felt like sometimes I had to have all of the answers. But what I've learned over time is that really um, the best answers come from a group often, from multiple different perspectives, from multiple different viewpoints. And, you know, you can craft the best answer from engaging with a bunch of different people to get their point of view. So I think that's what I wish I would have known when I was younger. And as you reflected on your journey and you looked at your path and how one thing led to another, was there any moves or just things that happened that you wish you could have changed um, and why? 
Yeah, I don't think I would have changed really anything in my career path just because even if at the time I didn't realize it, all of those experiences got me to where I am. So I don't really have any regrets from that standpoint. Um, what I would say that I would have would do differently is that I probably would have paid a little bit more attention to my personal life early on. Um, I kind of put that on the back burner and just really pursued my career. Um, I don't, it wasn't intentional. It just sort of happened that way. And I think I would have put um, more focus on my personal life um, and, you know, that probably would have been the only change, but, um, you know, all things work out in the end. So I try not to have too many regrets really. Um, you know, you look, look back and learn from things, but, um, I try not to regret too many of them. Right. No, it's a, it's a good point. Um, and do you think that it, it is possible for a woman to, really drive home her career, you know, be super career oriented, but also maintain that personal life. And from a woman's perspective, there's usually, um, you know, a, a larger breadth that means not just only being, you know, either a partner or a wife, but also potentially being a mother. And so I know I've felt trepidation about how do you really manage it all and, and do it all? And is it possible? Um, do you have any thoughts on that? especially since you're thinking about, I wish I focused on my personal life a little bit earlier. Do you think that would have hindered your career success at all? I don't think it would have hindered my career success, um, but I do think it, it's harder for women. And the reason that it's harder for women is that typically the burden of the household, the children and work fall on the woman. So um, what you really have to make sure of is you can't be afraid to ask for help whether that means that you've got to get a nanny or somebody to come clean your house, or you have a great spouse that shares 50-50 of the responsibility with you or 60-40 of the responsibility um, with you, then I think you can have it all. I think what women have a hard time doing is asking for that help and getting that extra help and feeling like they have to bear all of it on their shoulders. And that's just not true. Um, I mean, hey, I've got a cleaning lady and I wouldn't live without it. <laughs> um, because you know what? I don't wanna spend my weekend cleaning my house. So um, yeah. it sounds silly, but you know, if I didn't get that, then I'd be spending my weekend cleaning and that's not very much fun. So, um, you know, multiply that by a hundred different things when you, when you have kids and uh, multiple kids, then you're, you're gonna have to ask for more help. Yeah, completely agree. We've got to outsource or we've got to have family there for support. Absolutely. Find a way Absolutely. where it's not just you doing it all, but you have a yep. team of people helping support you if you really want to focus on your career. Have you had mentors along the way? And if so, what's some of the best advice you've received from them? I have probably more informal mentors um, than anything, but I would say the best career or best advice that that I've received is, you know, just keep learning. You know, you it might be learning from doing, it might be learning through reading, it might be learning through taking on a new role, um, listening to people, hearing what others have to say. But really, um, you've got to keep learning because if you're not, then you're just going to be stagnant. Whether that's in your career, whether it's in your own personal development, whether you know what you name it, if you're not continuing to learn, um, you're going to get left behind. How about fulfillment? So you've worked in a lot of different industries. You've been in a lot of different roles in your career. When were you most fulfilled and why? It's hard to pinpoint one because each job I think had its own um, pieces of it that I've enjoyed at, at different times. But I think probably the most fulfilling job that I had was when I did take that international assignment and I really, really had an opportunity to grow both personally and professionally. Um, I was working in another country. Um, I was managing two global training programs. And so we had people from all over the world coming into our um, training programs. They were developing 
um, in ways they never expected to, which was fun and exciting. Some of them were earlier in their career, some of them were more mid in their career. I had a chance to interact with um, key executives that sponsored our programs. And I got to learn so much about a whole variety of different cultures. I had the opportunity to travel with my job. I traveled personally and just learned so much about the world that I never would have learned if I hadn't um, taken that opportunity. It was scary at times. It was frustrating at times. I definitely went through the culture shock um, when I got there. But when I look back, that was probably the job where I learned and, and grew the most. Pushing yourself outside your comfort zone sounds like the theme there. Absolutely. All right, so how about the viewers that are watching now that says, I want to be Janice one day. I want to grow up in you know, the HR side. I want to be the chief HR officer. What would you tell those viewers today, the, the skills to focus on, to harness, to really help grow in their career? Yeah, I think the key thing is that you really have to learn the business. I think as an HR professional, um, there's many people who really often don't see HR as a key partner in the business, but we're here managing the largest asset the business has, which is the people. So um, really, if you wanna have a seat at the table, you have to understand the business and understand how the human part of that business intersects with the money-making part of that business. So you need both of them to be successful. And if you really want to drive and push um, HR initiatives for the business, you've got to understand why it's good for the business and how it's going to help propel the business further. So I would say that, that hands down is the number one thing that you've got to understand. Um, secondly, something a little bit more soft, I would say is understanding how to read a room. It's a really important skill because people often do not tell you what they're thinking, um, but you can pick up on those subtle clues as you are reading the room. Are they buying in? Are they checked out? Are they rolling their eyes? Are they you know, wanting more from what you have to say? Knowing when to push, when to pull back, all of those things to me really come from being able to read a room. Great advice. I love the, you know, know the business, understand the business and bring value as a result and kind of managing the key assets, which you said are the people, you know, from an operations perspective, um, that is so key. And, you know, we definitely feel that we're at our strongest when we really have a strong, you know, HR business partner that gets and understands the business and can help aid in that. So absolutely. You will not agree more get very far without understanding the business. They won't come to you for things on how to better their organization, how to better their team, how to better you know, optimize things, their organizational structure, um, how to develop their people if they, if they just think that you don't understand the business. Right. So how do you deal with stress? And don't tell me you don't have any. Be oh, please. <laughs> I What's will be your... honest and say I don't deal with it all that well, to be perfectly <laughs> honest. <laughs> well, I appreciate your honest confession. Yeah. Um... <laughs> I will say that, you know, I do internalize a lot. So, um, you know, that's not the best way to handle stress, but I have found that, um, you know, the old cliche of, of exercise does really help um, kind of like work out all of your stress. Um, also helps you sleep better at night, which is, you know, where my head starts spinning and, and where the stresses of the day really, really come forward. Um, so I've also uh, learned to use the Calm app to help kind of quiet the mind at night when it's the busiest. Um, and then lastly, too, just sometimes having somebody that that cares about you, that's not there to really tell you what to do, but that you can vent to and, you know, let out the frustrations of the day or talk things out with. Um, even if they don't even know what you're talking about, sometimes it helps you process that things and put things into perspective. So um, lastly is I just, I try not to sweat the small stuff. You know, I, I try to um, focus on the things that I can control. Although I say that's not always that easy. So um, it's sometimes nirvana to think that that's what I'm doing. But, um, but I do try mm -hmm. to kind of 
let go of the things I can't control. I want to talk about really just women and their finances, uh, you know, at home. And yeah. so who is the chief investment officer in your household? And, you know, take that a step further. You know, what advice do you have to women when it comes to personal finances? Yeah, you know, I would say that in our household, it is a partnership. Um, I, I would say we share that responsibility pretty equally. Um, although my husband's a banker, so I would say generally speaking, he would probably like to not have to do it. And I would really like to not have to do it. So we're sort of in a quandary from that perspective. <laughs> <laughs> So it's sort of like, you know, somebody asking me to do HR on my you know, off right. time. I'm not sure that's really what I want to do. But, um, but what I would say to particularly to, to women is don't let somebody else manage your finances. I mean, you can get help with managing your finances through advisors and, and things like that. Um, but you really need to understand and take control of your finances. Um, God forbid you're ever in a situation where, you um, you know, maybe the relationship didn't work out and you have no idea where your money is or what happened to it. Um, you know, I watched my sister, she'll kill me for telling this, but I watched my sister um, let her partner manage them into a, a bankruptcy. Um, mm -hmm. And that, you know, is was a really tough thing for her to get out of. So I would say don't ever let somebody, you know, take complete control of your finances. Yeah, absolutely. Definitely need to have a seat at the table and understand, you know, where things are going and where they're coming from. Absolutely. And, you know, make smart decisions. You know, maybe it means you've got to have a budget when you don't really want to. Maybe it means that you, you know, have to hold off on that vacation because it's going to put you further in debt. Um, maybe it's, you know, making sure that you're paying off those, you know, high interest credit cards first, things like that. Um, but being make, making sure that you're making those smart decisions when it comes to your finances as well. So Vader Down is founded on the saying of sending the elevator back down, which is really another way of saying paying it forward. Um, once we've reached a certain part of our careers where we can really help um, elevate and empower others. So Janice, what does sending the elevator back down mean to you? Well, I think it means a, a number of things. It means, you know, mentoring folks that are maybe earlier in the career. It means um, championing um, women or, or really anybody that you think is doing a great job. Sometimes having a voice at the top will get heard louder than, some, than it coming from the bottom. So I really do think that um, making sure you're championing those, those hard workers. You know, I, being in HR, I'm in a really unique position where I get to not only mentor and develop my own team, but I also get to talk to leadership about their talent and how we're developing their talent and making sure that um, we have diverse talent, we're, that we're doing diverse hiring, that we are um, developing people to make sure that we, we have diverse leaders of the future. So I think in HR, you, you know, it doesn't get better than that in helping people earlier in their career um, and making sure you're putting, you know, bringing that elevator back down so they can rise up. So, um, you know, I think not, not every job has that same kind of breadth and, and, view that HR does. Um, but I think we can all make sure that we're mentoring and championing folks that we think really need that, you know, can do that next job. So on the HR side of things and your positions that I know various organizations, have you been a part of or thought about um, sponsorships specifically of women in certain positions within organizations? I have, and I would say probably more mature organizations tend to do this better than um, organizations that are sort of, you know, growing and, and developing, or they have a more structured approach to that. Um, and I've seen where, you know, we've made conscious decisions to move people into a role where it was a true development role. It was in order to get them to that next step or give them projects or assignments that gave them visibility 
or um, exposure to things that they hadn't in the past. And if you're really managing talent well, you're doing all of those things, whether it's, you know, women, diverse um, employees or, or men too, you know, we all, they all need development at some point. When it comes to leadership, what is one thing that you think is true that society might tell you otherwise? Well, you know, we talked about it a little bit um, earlier is that, you know, society, I think, kind of tells women in particular that you can't have it all. It's the American dream that you can have it all, um, but we make it really hard. And I think that you absolutely can have it all. You can have a career, you can have a family, you don't have to pick one or one over the other. And I think that's something that that society doesn't always tell us is is true. I like that one. Yep. Um, in the healthcare landscape, um, in your opinion, what are we currently underestimating in the short term and overestimating in the long term? Yeah, I think we are really underestimating um, how many people don't have access to good or affordable health care and then realizing what impact that's gonna have in the long term. I'm not sure um, exactly what the impact is gonna be in the long term, um, but it's not gonna be a good one. You know, there's so many things that um, need to be, be fixed in healthcare um, that would give everyone access to affordable and good healthcare. Um, I think that this pandemic only highlighted that fact but in many cases, it made it much worse. Um, with all of the joblessness that's happening and people losing their health care, I think in many cases, it's, it's set us back um, from making sure that people have good affordable health care. Um, and the long-term long impacts are only going to be if we don't pay attention to it. It's going to be more expensive and it's going to be less accessible to people. So Janice, as we summarize today's episode, if someone just fast forwarded to the end here and watched this last question, what would be the key takeaway that you'd want them to receive from your interview today? Just go for it. You know, take the risk, jump off, you know, and do something that you're not sure you're ready to do yet. Um, you're going to be successful at it. Don't worry. And there'll be here people here to, to help you along the way. So that's what I would say to folks is, is just jump and, and take that risk and go for it. Take the leap, push yourself outside your comfort zone. Absolutely. Well, thank you, Janice, so much uh, for your time today. It's been great reconnecting with you and sharing your story. Uh, and thank you for just helping uh, promote uh, Vader Down. Absolutely. Thanks for inviting me. This has been a real pleasure.